Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by a man who first was a musician, growing up playing the drums, then he kind of fell into an acting gig or two. His latest role is Bishop in the horror flick, The Retaliators. We welcome Michael Lombardi. Hey, hey, what's up, Sean? Thanks for having me, buddy. How are you? Absolutely great, Michael. Let's go beyond the mic. Bishop is a level-headed preacher, but when his daughter is murdered, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> what made this role so interesting for you? Well, it, you know, it, it, it's. I think at the end of the day, look, it's a revenge tale, right? And it's the oldest story in the book. It's like Shakespeare, a, a, a love. It, it's a primal, uh, primal thing, but what I loved is the way this one was told. When I read the story, it's, I think it's very interesting that it's told through a man of the cloth. Like you said, my character, John Bishop. And when a human being, any human being, is confronted with a situation like this, you know, in the heart of the story, the provocative question is, what would you do if you had a minute alone with the person who killed your loved one, right? But if you were really given that minute as a human being, could you take it? And I think it's really interesting, to, uh, you know, seen through the man of the clock. Now, the soundtrack and film is filled with a who's who of rock with members of Motley Crue, Papa Roach, Five Finger Death Punch, stopping by as well as a guy from Clerks who was supposed to be off that day. How did working with this talented cast and crew make you feel? Unbelievable. Uh, you know, it's really special. I think the number one goal for me was to make this a movie first and have it be respected within the genre and as a film. And what I loved about it is it's, it sits on the highbrow side of horror. It's also a story. So I wanted all these different musicians who have cameos in the movie. If you weren't a fan of Papa Roach, you would just think Jacoby Shaddix was an actor. Same thing with Five Finger Death Punch. I mean, they play the motorcycle gang. They look great for the part. They're great in the part, but yet they're Five Finger Death Punch. And what I loved is the script has a wink at the 80s and all those great soundtracks of the 80s and 90s, Lost Boys, The Crow, Judgment Night. I just think it couldn't be a better fit where we bring music and film together with a killer soundtrack. But again, all these guys, I talked to them all before they got to set, all the musicians, all the cameos, they were so good and they're storytellers at heart with their songs and they were able to sort of make it a little smaller put it behind their eyes and bring it on set now you were in fx's rescue me blue bloods and many other projects you're a storyteller but which stirs your creative juices more acting directing or rocking oh jeez. so i'll tell you i did this whole film and i took on this project and it is not easy it's been three years uh, and, you know, through COVID and everything. But bottom line is I did it to act. I really love acting, but music informs me as an actor and it helps propel. Like if I'm doing a big scene, I listen to music. And that's why I think metal and horror and rock go so good together because it's like you could want to break something one minute or you're scared the next and what's around that corner, the roller coaster ride. So, so I think one really does inspire the other. And then on the directing side, you know, it was my first time directing. What I loved about directing is working with actors because I felt like I was able to connect and understand the objective of the characters in the scene and sort of seeing actors bring that to life in a different way then maybe I saw it, but in a way that can really move you. And every different actor has a different way of doing a scene or saying a line. And that was really interesting to see from the other side of the camera. Actor Michael Lombardi joins us beyond the mic, and it's time for the Rocking 8. Eight random questions. Answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. What's the worst part of your tennis game? <laughs> uh, serve. You like horror. So what's your favorite horror movie growing up? <sighs> Jaws. Do you still have your first drum kit? No. Do you know where it's gone or is it just gone? Dude, I was at, I did a talent show and I was young. I think I was in like seventh grade and one of the high schoolers was like, dude. And I, and I, 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 I was really weak. I, I gave him my drum set. Wow. Yeah. Would you rather play at the Wolf Den inside the Mohican Sun or play the local 269 again? Uh, Wolf Den was pretty sick, but the local 269's got it going on. Time to put you to the test. Who is the best 90s heavy rock band? Uh, Pearl Jam. Michael, when was the last time you written in your book of poetry and lyrics? Probably two years ago. Has it really been that long? Yeah. 
it's been that long, but I still write things down all the time, but I haven't picked up that book in a while because I wanted to sort of change my look. I was always, uh, I'm very influenced by the nineties. You did your homework, man. I got to throw audio slave in there too. And sound garden Jesus, but very nice. stone temple pilots, come on. Um, and this movie does have a wink at, like I told you, like the crow and those movies of the nineties too, with the soundtracks. But, um, I wanted to change my, my style of, of writing a little bit in my perspective. So I still do all that, but this movie has been literally, it's been a family member for three years, man. But you know, what's crazy. Let me just say this last thing was being around all these musicians all the time and listening to their music and placing it in the film. And now I'm going to see Five Finger Death Punch Monday night. Then you see them on stage and not on set. And you're like, so they've really influenced me too as a musician. Like I never thought the two worlds were going to come together like this. I'm, it's so crazy, you know? And there is a different respect therein. Ah, uh, yeah. So is Apache Stone's MySpace page still up? You know what? I don't think so. Did you know that I used to have a little record deal with MySpace when they had a label back in, I think, 2009-ish? Really? Um, so I haven't checked it in a long time. Yeah, they were my label at that time wow. when I was on Rescue Me. What's one thing that you want people to remember about you? Work ethic. I think uh, loyalty, honor, and work. I think it's all about the work at the end of the day and all the rest hopefully comes, but you just got to put the work in. It's time for one big question with actor Michael Lombardi be on the mic. Michael, who's the friend you lost to opioid addiction that helped inspire you with Snow Babies? Um, it wasn't exactly that, but there have been a lot of people who struggled with, uh, with drugs. I think it's a, an alcohol so I had an uncle, um, by the way, who, who um, he was, uh, you know, my mom's brother, and he was a phenomenal guitar player. And, my, you know, my, my, my grandmother had nothing. She grew up in New Haven. She lived in New Haven, and she was a waitress her whole life. And when she got, like, she bought her, her, her son a beautiful guitar. At the time, it was like $1,000 because he was so good. He used to go on the train to New York City because no one in New Haven can teach him. He played with Jim Hall. He was like a jazz guy. Phenomenal. And uh, he got messed up on drugs. He started taking acid and different things. And he sort of went on a trip and never came back. So I remember going over there as a kid all the time and there'd be guitars everywhere, but the strings would be broken and he'd pace. He was a very wonderful, sensitive spirit who allowed that to affect him. I mean, he didn't allow it, but it did, you know, I mean, he did it. So, so I think there's so many people who, who go down like that and musicians and artists, because, you know, you're an open soul and you're sensitive. And I think uh, it can really, it can really change a person and do a lot of damage. So that's one of the inspirations. And I don't honestly know if there were ever opioids involved, but that's one of the guys who, who would have really made a difference and uh, was affected like other millions of people. He almost played for a band named Fake Babyhead, thinks Pearl Jam was the best 90s heavy metal rock band, and he wants you to see his movie, The Retaliators. Michael Labardi, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Hey, thank you so much, Sean. Be well, man. And that, my friends, is a Beyond the Mic shortcut. <laughs> <laughs>